best part about being a YouTuber that refuses to niche down is that any errant thought that I have, I can make a whole video investigating on it and get paid. That's it, that's my intro. Hi, I'm Amanda, you're watching Soul Entertainment. So on November 27th, 2020, Miley Cyrus posted a tweet that shocked me back to elementary school. The tweet shows MileySpace.com and in it is a gift of a Miley's World ID card. Now this shocked me back to elementary school because I was in fact part of Miley's World, which was Miley Cyrus's paid fan club way back when. Now I wouldn't say that seeing this tweet unlocked like a box in my brain, like it was uh, a covered memory or that I like had suppressed it or anything like that because I never was uh, forgetting of the fact that I was part of Miley's world. My love of Hannah Montana and love of Miley Cyrus when I got into middle school definitely got locked inside a box and became my own tour little guilty pleasure because I was desperately trying to be cool. Everyone around me like hated the color pink and like didn't like anything that was popular and it's like you like Hannah Montana that shows for babies because we all thought we were so fucking mature and then you look back at those photos from like middle school and you're like oh my god who let me dye my hair with Kool-Aid you know like it's that type of era. If we go back to the tweet if you click on the MileySpace.com link in the tweet, it brings you to Miley Space, not Miley's World. That's an important distinction. Um, a place for Miley's friends. Miley Space is obviously a reference to MySpace, and it, though a lot of it is very reminiscent of Miley's World, this is also drastically different from Miley's World. So she is evoking the nostalgia, but not fully scratching the itch that this tweet gave me. If you're reading this, no, I fucking love you and appreciate you on the deepest level. Female, 28 years old, Franklin, Tennessee, United States, last login, 11-27-2020. And the photo she used is the same photo that was on the Miley World ID card and was the same photo that was on my Miley World ID card. Like I said, this awoke in my nostalgia, but it didn't scratch the itch. So I went to YouTube and just searched Miley's World because I was like, surely someone has posted them like a screen recording or there's some type of video or like a home video. There's something from pre-2010 of someone on Miley's World. And guess what? There wasn't, there was nothing. There's a YouTuber. That's a dog called Millie's World, but that's it. But I don't want you to worry, okay? Sh don't, sh don't breathe. Don't cry. Wipe your tears, okay? Because I'm a YouTuber and a Miley's World alumni. I can fix this problem. Before I start diving into Miley's World and uh, interweave some stories from my time being a Miley's World member and also my time briefly being an on-camera audience member for a Hannah Montana concert taping. I know I joke about playing the long game with my on-camera audience member experience stories and videos, but this is pushing it. A lot of what I'm gonna be telling you, I need you to take with a grain of salt when it comes to my own personal memories, okay? because I am 23 years old. I was part of Miley's World over a decade ago. And I was having difficulties remembering how old I was when all of this was going down and I was a part of Miley's World. And my dad said, well, your mother and I were still together when you went to the concert. So it had to have been around that time. Don't you love when you can categorize life events by uh, looking at them in relation to your parents' messy divorce? Anyway, so I know I was in elementary school because my parents officially separated right before I went to middle school. <laughs> Formative years. <laughs> Swell, why are you such an anxious mess? Well, <laughs> there's a list. And so since I was actually a member of Miley's World and went to this concert, um, I have had a whole host of trauma. And so certain events are very distinct and others are all encompassing very fuzzy. So unless I say I distinctly remember this, take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. Let me phrase it this way. Um, with the memories that I have, no one would allow me to testify in court on their behalf. <laughs> I'm assuming most of you know, but Miley Cyrus rose to fame because she was the lead on the show, Hannah Montana. Now, if I remember correctly from Miley's book that I read when I was definitely 12, <laughs> that came out in 2009 called Miles To Go. It's my understanding that in that book, she talks about the casting process for becoming Hannah Montana and being cast on the show. I wanna say the character's name was originally going to be called Chloe and she was still going to be Hannah Montana. So she was going to be Chloe Stewart, but because of how old Miley was at the time, they were worried about her having three different names to keep track of. So they changed the character from Chloe to Miley. So it was less names for her to have to worry about while playing Miley Cyrus and Hannah Montana. And I believe the whole Hannah Montana series is currently available on Disney Plus if you would like to go check that out. But the show aired on Disney Channel in 2006 when I was nine. If you ask someone that you know who was a fan of the show when it was airing, if they went to school each day and acted as if they were Miley Stewart, 
with the secret persona of being Hannah Montana and they deny it, your friend is a filthy liar. Well, now when I first started looking into Miley's world for this video, one of the first articles I found was from 2007 about a lawsuit against the Miley's world website. Now I could go into talking about uh, the business side of Disney Channel, of the golden age of Disney Channel, but it would be far too much for me to get into for this video. And I honestly would not be able to talk about it without going into the very interwoven uh, Disney star relationship <laughs> Uh, conglomerate triangle um, clusterfuck that happened at the same time. So we're gonna ignore that for now. But basically, Disney wanted to profit off of their stars at this time as much as possible. Even if they didn't sing on the show, if they could squeeze a singing career out of their young stars, they absolutely would. But obviously once Hannah Montana was successful and they saw the potential money-making ability of having both Miley Cyrus and Hannah Montana do a tour, they came out with the Best of Both Worlds tour. Again, according to Wikipedia, this started October 2007 and ended in January 2008. But according to this article, it says, members sue Hannah Montana fan club. Club. So though off the top of my head, I do not know when Miley's World started and I was having difficulties finding an exact date, but because of the lawsuit, I'm gonna say that it was sometime around 2007. Basically join Miley's World the same reason you join any other creator or celebrities, fan site, um, Patreon, or... Oh my God, I could have made a Jeremy Renner app, Miley's World Venn diagram or something. Oh my God, why didn't I do that? But basically for a year's membership to join Miley's World, it was $29.95. Yes, I remember paying the $29.95. I distinctly remember my parents making me use my birthday money to pay for it, like they used their card, but I had to pay them with my birthday money. I don't think this is the earliest one I could find, but this is certainly the earliest instance that I could find of this particular type of uh, outrage slash lawsuit. One of the perks of joining Miley's World was one of the perks that a lot of fan sites offer, which is essentially a better chance, or sometimes in terrible wording instances, a definite chance at first come first serve tickets for concerts. I think it was maybe a year ago now or two years ago now, um, it was My Favorite Murder, their fan cult. A lot of fans were outraged because a lot of shows got sold out really quickly. And that is really the case with all of these things. I don't think any fan sites can really guarantee that its members will absolutely be getting like tickets to shows or anything like that because they really can't guarantee that unless they cap the number of members that are allowed to have memberships active at any given time. And that was the issue that they essentially had here. Thousands of Hannah Montana fans who couldn't get concert tickets could potentially join a lawsuit against the Teen Performers Fan Club over memberships they claim were supposed to give them priority for seats. The lawsuit was filed on behalf of a New Jersey woman and anyone else who joined the Miley Cyrus Fan Club based on its promise that joining would make it easier to get concert tickets from the teen stars website. Her sold out best of both worlds tour is the hottest concert ticket of the year with shows selling out in as little as four minutes and scalpers getting four or five times the face value. The class action lawsuit names Interactive Media Marketing Inc. and Smiley Miley Inc. as defendants and seeks triple damages for all members of the lawsuit and attorney's fees. The plaintiff doesn't yet know the size of the class but based on the popularity of the website it could number tens of thousands of people according to the lawsuit. They deceptively lured thousands of individuals into purchasing memberships into the Miley Cyrus fan club, plaintiff's attorney Rob Pierce said. And here is my exact point. The fan club costs $29.95 a year to join, according to the lawsuit, which alleges that the defendants should have known that the site's membership vastly exceeded the number of tickets. I mean, yeah. Cyrus's publicist Megan Prophet said in a statement that fan club members had an opportunity to buy pre-sale tickets and more than 70,000 club members attained them as a result of their membership. Okay. One second. 70,000 times 29.95. God, I wish I was on a fucking TV show. <laughs> I just wanted a ballpark of like how much money they could have made from Miley's World. Um, and off the uh, ballpark, just from membership fees alone, based on 70,000 club members, let's assume it was way more than that, over $2 million. And again, that's on the low end, that's just on how many people were able to buy tickets for the tour. Miley World members had far greater access to concert tickets than the general public and other fan clubs. And the claim that the vast majority of Miley World members were unable to obtain concert tickets is simply false. Now, I couldn't find anything talking about whether or not this lawsuit, like, went anywhere or anything like that. In case you're wondering how my memory works, I can remember things from a book I read when I was 12, but I can't remember an article that I had found pre-recording this video. Um, there was a conclusion to the lawsuit. This article posted in 2008 
8 says Pennsylvania's Attorney General Tom Corbett has announced the settlement of a class action lawsuit against the Nashville company that operates Cyrus's Miley World over allegations of deceptive advertising for promising but failing to deliver tickets to the teen sensation's Best of Both Worlds tour last year. In a statement, the Attorney General says the website members will have their membership extended by four extra months after MileyWorld.com did not honor a commitment to give them early access to purchase tickets to a sold-out 2008 concert in Pittsburgh. Per the agreement filed Tuesday in Allegheny County Common Pleas Court, in Active media marketing must post a notice on its site stating purchase of a Miley World fan club membership does not guarantee access to tickets. The company will also fork over 20,000 in penalties. Was able to find this blog spot uh, thing from Yak Talk, but this is uh, a woman talking about her daughter and Miley's world. So I wanted to read you this lovely blog post. I'm pissed off. Last September, my youngest daughter begged me to let her join up on Miley Cyrus's website, Miley World. Membership allowed you access to games and newsletters and fan info about Miley, who plays the popular Hannah Montana. I relented. And within a couple of days, my daughter totally lost interest in the site. I'm fairly certain that's what happened with me because I don't have like a definitive end date of when I stopped going on the website or anything like that. In the months that followed, Cyrus was involved in a number of controversies that tainted her wholesome image, including a topless photo shoot for Vanity Fair. Oh my god, I remember that. A pregnancy rumor and a number of risque pictures leaked online that Cyrus snapped herself. I mean, she was a teenager at this point. I was glad that my daughter lost interest in this mediocre actress and singer. Do you guys remember how mean grown women were? Jesus. And didn't give the Miley World site another thought. Until yesterday, that is, when I opened my credit card bill and found a charge of $29.95 from Miley World. It was labeled as an auto renewal. I immediately went to the website to try and contact them, but surprise, there is no way to email them directly without logging in first. I had to request the username and password, long since forgotten, and finally managed to access the site and fill out a customer service ticket to ask for assistance. They wrote back to inform me that they do not give refunds. Supposedly, they send out an email 30 days before automatically renewing your membership. And if you don't go on to the site, navigate through your profile and unclick auto renew, they will hit your credit card. The problem is I never got any email from them and was completely unaware of the charge until it hit my bill. Their response? Too bad. No refunds. No exceptions. Thanks for being a fan of Miley World. I am incredulous over this. The fact that they have such a staunch no refunds policy tells me that they must screw people over so often with the auto renewal. They just don't give a crap anymore. I am filing a play with the FTC and the Internet Crime Complaint Center. The website is guilty of internet fraud and must be stopped. For anyone reading this who experienced a similar issue, I now have their direct email address, support at MileyWorld.com. Quite a misnomer there, since the last thing they do is support people. She posted a photo, a uh, trashy Miley Cyrus owner of the scamming website. She is definitely a minor there. I'm not putting that photo up there, fuck that. As you can see in the comment section of this post, I have received many comments from folks who also fell victim to the Miley World auto renewal scam. Hang on, should I ask my dad? Hold on. Hey dad, do you remember if Miley World tried to auto renew your credit card, your mom's credit card? Yeah, your mom's bitch about how much money it was constantly. Jesus Christ, what did I just pay for? What did I sign up for? Yeah, I did. But it was twenty nine ninety five. It was for a yearly charge, so it would have been a year later. Yeah, but she got hit for that. And she was like, she was, it was, uh, they hit her for some extra shit too, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, so according to my father, they did in fact uh, try to hit my mother with an auto renewal and they tried to hit her with uh, other charges for random things. So in a different post, she says that uh, she was in fact given a full refund from Miley's World in 2008. And I was gonna end this bit here, but this next update references the contest which is something that I was a part of and I actually ended up winning. So let me talk about that. My child begged to join Miley World to enter a contest to meet Miley. Once on the site, we learned she would need to submit a one minute video. She spent her savings to purchase a camera to video record herself for the entry. By the terms listed on the site, the contest was supposed to end October 31st and the winner was supposed to be announced no later than December 31st, 2008. The site never posted any information and continued to accept new entrants into the contest. My daughter contacted them by email as I did and the response was vague. They stated they were attempting to give everyone a chance to enter and did not know when the contest would end. They continued to have the same dates posted on the site and never posted the contest had been extended. Just recently they revised the dates to end the contest January 2009. My daughter and I now feel that the contest was not legitimate. She is so crushed. I am upset. I feel they took advantage of my daughter and tens of thousands of other children. She has not picked up that camera since she wasted her money on a fraud. I'm very confused about 
what exactly about the contest was a scam, okay? Because as far as it seems, they just kept extending the deadline. Yes, that is uh, questioning. And if they weren't disclosing that the deadline was being extended, that's something else. I understand why the mother and daughter would be like upset that it's like, oh, we got it in by the deadline and then uh, you should have announced the winner. Instead, you're just giving more people an opportunity to, you know, make a video. She doesn't talk about what her daughter did or anything for the video. Like personally, if this was me, I probably would have just like kept making videos because it's like, okay, you're just gonna extend the deadline. Okay, here's 14 videos of why you should let me meet Lionel with Cyrus. I promise I'm not insane. You know, like probably would have done something like that, uh, but there's no update. So I have no idea if this child was selected or what the deal was, but because they'd mentioned the uh, contest, I wanted to talk about how I technically won a contest through Miley's World. So if you've ever seen an episode of Hannah Montana, there are times where they show in transitions or things like that, or uh, scenes or bits where it's clearly Miley performing as Hannah Montana on a concert at a venue. Now it's my understanding that they used some footage from the Best of Both Worlds tour. It's kind of like filming for a movie. They have to do a lot of takes. So they did my understanding multiple times, and I only went to one of these, but I believe they did more of these, where they would do concerts that were strictly you are coming to be an on-camera audience member and this concert is only happening so that we can use this footage for the show. It's my understanding that this was announced as a contest on Miley's World. Instead of like writing a letter or a video entry, hell, maybe they did and my mom did this. I just know specifically I did nothing to get this thing, okay? Because I believe Miley's World also had this thing where parents could log in on your account and basically monitor your account without you being aware. That was part of the draw for a lot of parents with being a part of this site, I believe. But I distinctly remember my mom uh, put my info in or submitted my name and then had to like call in at a certain time and basically be involved in like a call in thing in order to win these tickets for this concert. But we won the tickets. Let's say I was 10 or 11 at this time. Um, I distinctly remember this being during the school year because of what ended up happening at the concert itself. I'm gonna go ahead and assume that this happened in fall of 2008 because of when I was on the site and again, the yearly membership. My birthday is in November. So we're gonna go ahead and say that I was 10, maybe 11 at this time, but I was definitely in the fifth grade, okay? So my mom won this contest for me. My parents made a big deal about it. They were probably trying to distract me from their impending divorce but you know. But like any on-camera audience casting call, okay, because these clips of this concert were going to end up being shown in the show, there were very specific restrictions on what we were allowed to wear, okay? So I remember them saying that like, you can't wear any bulky jackets. Um, I think I only had like a very thin jean jacket on, but you know, it was like a jean jacket from Limited to or Justice, okay? It probably had like, a rhinestone flower, a butterfly on the side of it, probably thinner than paper or something, you know? So not super warm, okay? Bright colors, cause you know, it's Disney, you know, they want colorful stuff. Taping for the concert was at Irvine Meadows Amphitheater. Moment of silence, which was closed and demolished in 2016. Five Star Amphitheater, that's like the replacement for the Irvine Meadows Amphitheater, sucks, okay? It sucks. It's horrible. Anyway, Irvine Meadows was outside. I went to many a concert there. I have many memories of Irvine Meadows. The way the amphitheater was is that it was on a hill. So they had a grass area and then also the amphitheater style seating. But to get to any portion of it, you had to hike up the side of a hill. So already the crowd is interesting because you have a lot of uh, Disney Channel wannabes, uh, kids and tweens and their parents hiking up the side of a hill to go find seating or they are being put wherever they're seating. And I remember specifically I was put in, I can point out where, cause I remember my line of sight. I was basically right on the front row of the section. Very quickly it starts getting dark and it starts getting cold. Someone from the show or from production came out and explained uh, into the microphone to this amphitheater full of tweens uh, what the situation was going to be and all of that. So, hey, you're gonna see a lot of these songs performed multiple times because they need multiple takes. But the thing is, is that we need you guys to be super loud and excited. And if you know the words, sing along, it'll be fine. We're all gonna have fun. And Hannah is gonna come out and sing with you guys. It's gonna be great, okay? You guys are gonna see a great show. It starts fine. The first song, great. It becomes a little less fun when you are screaming the entire time. You hear the same song three times. At a certain point, the wind picked up. And again, I'm freezing. So I remember at some point I started crying. 
I don't remember if they had moved on to the second song or not, but I definitely started crying at some point. I'm like hiding into my mom. She's like, you have to stand up if the cameras see you, you gotta be on camera. And I'm like hiding and freezing and shivering because I am a tiny little 11 year old. And I'm only 5'2 now, I was even smaller then. I didn't have a lot of surface area or body fat to protect me from the elements, okay? So I'm shivering and shaking. And then at a certain point, I don't know if it was from the wind, or what? And I don't know if this was two or three songs in, and by two or three songs, I mean like six songs in. The audio to Miley or Hannah's mic cut out, okay? And there started being a lot of issues, so she had to stop singing, and then they would keep playing the music, and then they would rewind it, and then play it again. And then at a certain point, they just brought her off stage, and they just started playing the earlier taping they had just done. My mom is like, see, Amanda, they're gonna go do a costume change, and then it's gonna be great, and you're gonna be fine. Like, just move around a little bit, warm yourself up, it'll be fine. And I'm sobbing. It's kind of funny how quickly I caved at this concert because I was like, if you love me, you'll let me leave. Like I, I was that little shit um, because now like the shit that I've been through at concerts, like panic attacks in the mosh pit, having someone jab me in the eye, shit like that. Like I'm cold, uh, the opener's still on, you better suck it up, you know, like. <laughs> but you know, I was 11 and my parents were on the verge of a divorce. So my tolerance level was zero. If you love me, you'll let me leave. I don't wanna be here. And so we ended up leaving. And as we were leaving, like so many people tried to stop us from leaving, like, hey, we can't have you leave because she's still on stage. And I'm like, she's not on stage. And they're like, yeah, but we, we're getting audience reactions now. We ended up leaving. It's a, again, hike down the hill, a hike back to your car. And we went back to the car and we went home and I cried the entire time. And I think I made my mom drive me through Wendy's to get a Frosty, even though I was freezing. And though she bought me a Frosty, I'm fairly certain my mom was like super pissed the entire time because again, I'm fairly certain she was on the phone and had to call in like repeatedly and multiple times. Like I didn't buy a new camera to try and enter into this contest, but it was like a process to get those tickets and she felt like I was just throwing it away. So, eh, you know, it happens. That was actually not my first concert experience. That wasn't even my first concert experience at the Irvine Meadows Amphitheater, uh, but that was was technically my first on-camera audience member experience and it was dog shit. <laughs> we were definitely not the only ones that left when we did. I distinctly remember like other people walking and like my mom talking with like another mom or something. But I don't know if that was specifically because of the cold or because they were annoyed. Like this isn't what I thought this was going to be type of thing. But again, it's like you're dealing with kids, you know? I don't blame production. I don't blame Hannah Montana, the show, for me having a shitty experience going to a taping. It was certainly an experience, just not the one that I wanted. Um, but yes, went home. And eventually I forgot about Miley's world. And then according to my dad, my mom's card definitely got charged. They tried to hit her with the annual fee and all of that. So I have no idea how that got resolved because then they had the subsequent divorce that lasted four years. My other main memories of Miley's world were that concert. Um, I remember watching a lot of the extra bonus content that was on there. I can't for the life of me remember any bonuses like off the top of my head, like what the content actually was. But I remember I spent a lot of time watching like certain videos a lot. Um, but I spent a lot of time on the chat room that was in there and they had moderators and stuff. But honestly, being part of that chat room and being a part of that quick chat and all of that probably did a lot of good for my dyslexia, to be honest. So silver lining, because of Miley's world, I can read. <laughs> but that's gonna be it, Miley, if by chance you see this, um, Thank you for being so interwoven with my childhood. <laughs> Congrats on uh, Plastic Hearts and thank you so much for the Prisoner music video. Thank you for that. Were you a part of Miley's World? Did you watch Hannah Montana when it was airing? Uh, did me talking about this remind you how old you are? If that's the case, I am sorry. Were you a part of any fan sites either when you were a kid or older or now? Did you ever win any contests or go to any concerts because you were part of a fan site? Let me know, comment down below. Shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting my Patreon. If you'd also like to support me on my Patreon, there are not free concert tickets. You will not be getting access to concert tickets because I don't sing. But if you'd like to follow me on social media to see what a disaster I am, that'll be all up here. And uh, that's gonna be it. Have a lovely day. Goodbye.
I called it the five star amphitheater earlier. It's the five point amphitheater, but I don't care. I don't, you deserve to have your name wrong, okay? I hate the five point amphitheater. I saw one concert there, okay, pre pandemic. Just the design of the amphitheater is not conducive to that of a good concert experience unless you were just going there to get drunk. It's just not a good concert experience, okay? And oh my God, I miss going to concerts. <laughs> Thank you, Elaine, Alan, Elise, Brayden, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Cody, Colton, Crash, PC, Devin, Dirty One, Don, Elliot, Aaron, S, and Evan, Feckless, Finnegan, Hopeless, Hollow, Jason, Joe, John, M, Jordan, Joseph, Kenny, Kevin, Kim, Kristen, Lex, Lisa, Luis, Manga, Matt, Matthew, S, Me, Lord, Red, Michael, Michael, Jen, Nathaniel, Pat, Parlock, Rob, Rob, Ross, Sam, Simon, Stefan, Tasha, Timothy, Tom, Tyrone, Wayne, Wendy, William, Zendry.